I was shaving it. I was because I, you know, sometimes I miss some spots. So I was looking in the mirror, make sure I didn't miss a spot when I when I was shaving it. And then I was like, oh, I think I missed a spot dying it. But I'm like, how the fuck can I miss a spot? Like I'm rubbing my whole head. So how did I miss one spot? And then that's when I looked closer. And then I like the shadow hit. And I was like, oh, that's a fucking dent, nigga. What the fuck? I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Yes or no? Did you ever take banned substances to enhance your cycling performance? Yes. I had no prior knowledge of the planned assault on Nancy Kerrigan. I am deeply sorry for my irresponsible and selfish behavior I engaged in. What's up, guys? Welcome back. Oops, the podcast. Julio Gallerati, Ryan Lynch. Yo, yo, yo. yo Happy yo, yo. Tuesday. Happy Tuesday from the boys. We are here. We are doing it. We are in the dog days of winter, and we have a special guest on the show today. Uh, this man is a hilarious stand-up comedian uh, who I've known for many years in the New York comedy scene. Uh, good friend, great guy, has a lot of interesting stories, uh, and just a very talented comedian. Please give it up for Josh Russell, everybody. Cheer, 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 cheer. Cheer, cheer, cheer. What's up, players? What's up, dude? <laughs> Welcome onto the show, man. Uh, Josh and I have been spending a lot of time together lately. Josh was with me in Stamford last Thursday. Josh was with me in Springfield, Missouri. If any of you guys were at those shows, uh, we're old pals, and we spent a lot of time together chatting. And dude, yeah, I remember when you were, when you arrived to the airport in uh, New York. We were when we were going to Missouri. You had a you said you had a dent in the side of your head. <laughs> yes. Tell me about this dent. I just I realized that like it was like a couple of days earlier, because um, I I just dyed my hair because I was getting ready for my Ooh. birthday. Getting ready. You, can you see the now dent? I can. See, I was looking for it. Yeah. Imagine. No, it's there. It's <laughs> very there? visible. Yeah. Can we get a? Can you turn your head a little bit so <laughs> yeah, we can like? Let me zoom in. It's a sure. pretty big dent, bro. Let's get a zoom in on this dent. Yeah. Yeah. I could like. It's right there. God damn. Is it getting? Deeper? Wait, I want to get really close. Fuck. You can definitely see that. Is this a dent or is this just Josh's head? I that is what we're trying. We'll see at the, <laughs> the lady, the trick of the ER, she looked in the back and she like squared me up. She's like, well, there's actually a dent on the other side too. Right. <laughs> Josh is working the night before we're about to go to the airport. Now, you know, we have this flight. It's not like an early flight. So maybe that like let your guard down a bit. It was late enough that you're like, okay, it's it's gonna be my birthday at midnight. I can theoretically have a big big night, but the night turned into a really big night. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I was working. This girl was just you know was at the bar that I was working at, and it was my birthday. So and there wasn't that many people. So you know we we're just hanging out, drinking. Uh. And then so I mentioned the dent in my head, and she's like, "That's that's a serious dent," and I was like. <laughs> Yeah, and she's like, you have to go get that checked out. And I was like, nah, I was like, I'm good. And she's like, no, you have to get that checked out like right now. And she's like, I'll take you to the emergency room right now. And I was like, well, I got to like close out the bar and stuff. And she's like, I'll wait here. And then so she, she hung out. I closed the bar. She got a fucking Uber. We went to the ER. <laughs> and then she had a flight that morning too to the Bahamas. But she was so worried about this dent in my head. She's like, because I think like, I think her dad or somebody hit their head and then had like, like some like bleeding in their like head okay. or some shit. Okay. And she knew a couple people that like got fucked up from hitting their head. And then like, so she was like, that looks serious. <laughs> Cause she was like, have you hit your head? And I was like, well, I had this thing in September. I hit my head and you know, then I hit my head again. <laughs> you, you never, you never noticed it. No, I literally like a couple of days before my birthday. Cause I, cause I dyed my hair and then I, I was shaving it because, I, I, you know, sometimes I miss some spots. So I was looking in the mirror and make sure I didn't miss a spot when I, when I was shaving it. And then I was like, oh, I, I think I missed a spot dying it. But I'm like, how the fuck can I miss a spot? Like, I'm rubbing my whole head. So how did I miss one spot? And then that's when I looked closer. And then I, like, the shadow hit. And I was like, oh, that's a fucking dent, nigga. What the fuck? But <laughs> That's like a part of your head, too. Like, when you're, like, checking out your side profile, you wouldn't really... Like, your eyes can't look that yeah, far you never, back because it's at the beginning of the curve. No, I had to two mirrors to, to, to see this. Like, yeah. one on the side. But and you then, two like, mirrored another. it after you touched it and felt it. Yeah. No, no, I didn't even feel it. Like, okay. I, didn't, I, no, I didn't notice it by touch at first. Bro, let's examine the other side of your head real quick. Can you see? Just to compare. Is there... It, there doesn't appear to be a dent on the other side. No. Can you... Can, Can you, you turn it a little harder? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, you're right. There's 
there's exclusively the dent on the one side. Yeah. But I will say this. Once once we noticed this dent, I started looking at everybody else's head in the airport. And like <laughs> anybody who had a similar haircut also had dents and shit. So I'm not like certain that came directly from some sort of traumatic. But then what I mean, what does a dent in your head come from? That's what worried me. Birth? Have you all? Is it possible we may have to examine old photos of Josh? I don't think. Nah, I definitely to see if we can find a dent. I'm curious nah. which part of the brain that would is affect over here. Should, yeah, should that specific part of your head get pushed? Or just think of like squishing it in, like or just pushed or hurt in. more. Yeah. Like that. So I'm gonna look into that right now. Okay. And see what functions. What if I start talking weird? Guys? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Push it. You speak a different language. I'm fluently. okay. <laughs> You're gonna be fine. Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> well. But yeah. so we got it. I went to the ER, got a CT scan, and the doctor was like, "We don't see anything." But you were, which you were joking about. You're like, you said something on stage that was funny about this. Oh yeah, because I didn't have health insurance. Like, <laughs> that's why they didn't see anything. <laughs> Josh has a conspiracy theory that if you don't have health insurance, they're less likely to look thoroughly. <laughs> yeah, you have to be like almost dead for them to care. Okay, but you're, but you theoretically are on the hook now for this hospital visit, right? Or we don't know. She told me she was going to pay for it. Yeah, but like you guys were. You guys were partying, right? You guys yeah, were drinking. We were part, yeah. You were up late. Yeah. So do you think part of, like, if you guys were both completely sober, do you think you would have ended up in the hospital? Yeah. Okay. Because I, I think also because it was my birthday, too, she wanted to, it to be like a birthday present. <laughs> like uh, That feels like a drunken <laughs> decision. You are to get your dent checked. To me, it's like if I had a dent and it was my birthday, I'd be like, you have a dent, dude. We're going to the hospital, but let's have fun. It's your birthday. You're fine. <laughs> like, you're clearly fine. You didn't just get the No, dent. she was worried at that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was She was concerned. She sounds like a very nice person. Yeah, I mean, I'm, it was, I'm, I met her that night. She was really, I thought, you know. Have you guys stayed in touch? I haven't. Uh, no, because she was going to her flight. We left the ER at four in the morning. Her flight was at like six. Jesus. Yeah. And no, now that that's it. Rode off into well, the she wind. went to the Bahamas, and then I got her number, but now I haven't. You haven't talked to her. I've, no, I haven't even had time to. But do you intend to follow up about the fact that she has committed to paying the bill for this? <laughs> 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 do we think like is it possible that she like ran her card that night? Like, I mean, I, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I should have up and ask her. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, but, like, theoretically, if you end up getting that bill, right? So now, Josh does not have health insurance at the moment. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Um. So, theoretically, this could be a $2,000 bill. Yeah. Easily. If not, probably, well, the the CAT scan probably is another 1000 Yeah, for the head and neck, I guess. So, you know, let's, we're looking at thousands of dollars here. Now, we had Nimesh on this episode, on this show one time, mm. and he was saying how if you get a big bill from the hospital... You can just call and be like, hey, I can't pay this. And they'll be like, all right. And you're like, they're like, what can you pay? And you're like, I like, don't think I can pay this at all. And they're like, all right, you're, you're good. So I don't know if that's a method you know about. Yeah, I, I've, I've done that a few times. Oh, sorry. I, mean, <laughs> I know I like owe quite a few thousand dollars. I didn't mean to mansplain not paying your hospital bill <laughs> oh, yeah, to you. I know all about that. I just <laughs> thought in case that was useful information. Okay, so thousands of dollars potentially. Um, you get that bill in the mail. Will you text her? <laughs> I'm I'm probably gonna reach out to her anyway this, this week. Yeah, just because I, I feel like it was such a nice thing to do. Like right. that really, it kind of warmed my heart. You know, that's sweet. You know, right? The the soft side of me is just like you know, it was right. a nice thing to do. Who is this angel? She spent Kelly. her night Kelly Kells. Yeah, Kells. The soft side of your head. Shout out to Kells. <laughs> yeah. the soft side of your head. Soft side of your heart. And she, you know, was very concerned for you, very caring. She yeah, took you. So a lot. that's clever, though. You can text her and be like, hey, that was really nice of you, what you did for me, like down to hang, whatever. And then you sort of get the dialogue going. And hopefully she will be like, I am I know I said I'm paying for it. I am. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> Should I bring it up first? No. I mean, she did say she was going to pay for you it. You just sent her a picture of the bill. She did, but you guys, <laughs> you guys were else. lit too, dude. So I, I think the move is, in my opinion, you wait for her to bring it up first. Hopefully, somehow, it slips through the cracks or she already paid or whatever. When, If and when you get that bill, 
and then maybe you can start to consider whether or not you need to bring it up. But hopefully I mean, she, she'll be forced. She did a lot for. I mean, she gave me. She got the Uber there. It's like <laughs> <laughs> she would have got me Uber back. Like she did a lot for me that night. That's funny. Um, this looks like your the occipital lobe. The occipital lobe. The occipital lobe. Is that occipital? it? Occipital? I believe so. What does it do? Let's double check the pronunciation so that I'm not an idiot for correcting you on something. Occipital lobe. So good job. Thank you. Thanks for making me feel bad. Hey, I'm, sorry, um, Ryan. I'm, I'm, I'm just here looking out for you, Ryan. Okay. So what is this effect? Uh, your ability to recognize object movement. Okay. Reading. Identify visual <laughs> stimuli. So that means like <laughs> identifying people. Like you'll have a harder if you hurt that even more, or if you damage that even more, you'll have a tough time being able to tell who Julio is when you're hanging out with him. Who am I? Wait, who are you? Man? <laughs> <laughs> Meow. Uh, you will have a difficult time if if you get damaged again. Assessing distance, size, and depth, mm. mapping the visual world, and also it's going to affect your ability to see and distinguish between different colors. That's great. So now, like so everything. Are, that's some, great. some of the big ones. Yeah. So Josh yeah. famously loves riding around on a giant wheel. It's an electric <laughs> wheel. So that's great to know that there's now a blind man driving around <laughs> on an electric wheel. <laughs> Mr. Magoo, dude. Uh, whoops. Uh, um, so Josh. Uh, sorry. Did you have something else? No, no. Josh, uh, in the past few years, has gotten really into electric wheeled. All sorts of electric wheeled devices. You you were into the skateboard for a while. Yeah. You were into now. You're riding this wheel. Uh, at least he has body armor now. Like his jacket, he literally looks like like uh, venom in the jacket. Yeah, I made it myself. Did you really? That's pretty cool. It has like shoulder pads. It has like back armor. Like this is a legitimate like football like jersey you've created. Yeah. yeah I pull it. May football may pads. Grab yeah, it? yeah. Pull it on. Yeah. Pull it on. It's pretty cool. It looks like a Ninja Turtle. Yeah, I, I attached a phone holder to the wrist, too, so I could put my phone on it like when I'm yeah, riding Yeah, look at this stuff. thing. It's pretty cool. I didn't realize you made that, dude. And then I got a little thing here, so I attached a little, nice little, I can have a speaker on my arm right there. Yeah, this, this is real. Where do they sell these types of jackets? I mean, you modded it out, Well, this was a where jacket, do you buy this armor? The jacket I got from Calvin Klein when I was working oh. there. This is another Calvin Klein person, by the way. We had Zach yeah. and Danny on last week. Oh, okay. Josh, Zach, Danny, and I all worked at Calvin Klein together at one point. Benny as well, maybe. Like yeah, the, for a little bit. Yeah. The entire squad was working at all Calvin, at Klein. Calvin Klein. All at Calvin Klein. See, I actually might. I'm working Calvin right now, yeah. dude. Jo <laughs> Josh was a full, was actually became a full time employee. You had great health insurance. You hadn't. You had said that you hadn't really been to the doctor much before that. Never in your whole life until I worked at Calvin Klein. So what's that like when you go to the doctor for the first time at 28 or whatever, however old you were, how does I that come? 34. Wow. How does that conversation go? <laughs> I mean, it was, it was a whole new world. No, but with the, so that too, I'm sure. But with like, the doctor. What? Like which doctor? Just like the random? No, the doctor comes in and they're like, Hey Josh, like welcome. Like at some point, does it come to the forefront that you do not have a medical footprint yet? They're like, your file. You're like, I don't have a file because I've never been to the doctor. Like, did that ever come up that you had never been to the doctor till you till this I moment? Mean, they, I mean, I feel like it was every time I went, it was always like weird like that. When they'd ask like, oh, who's your primary care physician? And I'm like, my what? <laughs> <laughs> you? <laughs> I don't know. The doctor, nigga? I don't know. <laughs> like, and they're like, you don't have like a primary? I'm like, I don't know. Nah, I don't go to anybody. Yeah. But, and, but I mean, even then, I didn't go until like, I got, I don't know if I went for my physical, I think I might've went to the, for the physicals before and then like doing the checkups. Cause with Calvin Klein, you know, they had like, the, like a, a fucking building where everybody went to and you could, you get the whole fucking physical and everything. Oh, uh, oh, interesting. So like yeah. at all the employees, there was a doctor that everybody went to type thing. You yeah. Know? It was like this like side company or something. I forgot what it was called to get like a general thing to clear you to work. Well, not even for work, just for like your oh, physical. That's yeah. great. Yeah. And that was the first time you'd ever gotten a physical in your whole life? I believe so, yeah. Was there any like shocking developments? Where no, which conf it confuses me to this day. It's like, I'll go there and I'm like, hey, everything's good. And I'm like, what? Yeah. I'm like, yeah. What did the doctor say the first time you went in after explaining that, like what Julia said, you don't have like a medical footprint? Was he just like, oh, okay. All right, let's get started. Or yeah. did he kind of okay. challenge you off that a little bit to try to get any medical information before starting I feel the like assessment. I, could tell, I feel like most niggas don't have a medical footprint. 
<laughs> yeah, right. Like, yeah, this, yeah, this is like, I'm just. Like, I feel like just like black people, or especially like you know, hood, or niggas from like a certain level, just right. this isn't a part of their world. So I feel like even doctors, you know, like if you step into a hospital, they might even be able to tell like this. Interesting. Okay. So that makes me think a couple of things. So first of all, okay, I guess it's not completely uncommon for somebody to be coming into the doctor for the first time in adulthood. Yeah, because do- this right here is like, that. it's still like new to me. I'm sure there's plenty of, if, you know, there's plenty of people that might listen that might not even know, like have, could fathom just like a medical footprint, you know? Right, no, totally. Where it's like the whole history, you know, psych, you know, I went to a psychologist and going to a psychologist and a psychiatrist. And then all that stuff is connected under like your umbrella of who you are. Right. And they could check all that stuff. And Right, 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 right. right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, totally. Yeah. So that's, I mean, good for you. That's great that yeah. like you sort of were able to figure all that out on your own. You go for your physical. They're like, nothing's wrong. You're like, really? I think that is a normal emotion to feel. A lot of the people that I know go get really anxious for their physical because some shit's wrong with them. As we get older, stuff starts to hurt. Stuff's fucked up, like whatever. And you're like, I'm going to go and they're going to tell me I'm dying or whatever. Yeah. And then you get a clean bill of health and you're like, relieved till next year. Right. Yeah. Well, my cholesterol went down, whatever, whatever it might be. So I don't think that that is like crazy, at least. So like the fact that you're shocked, like, I don't think is unusual is all I'm saying. I also think that they don't even like because I've gone with problems and they don't see the problems at first. Mm. I feel like they're just used to. Like, you know, it's probably nothing. Right, right. And I don't think that there's, I don't know that there's something necessarily wrong with that approach, but it just goes to show, and my mom always used to say this to me, bless her heart, but like, you need to advocate for yourself. So if you're like, my shit's fucked up, and they're like, you're fine, you'd be like, like, no, can we do something else? And they'd be like, okay, and then they like are annoyed, but then you go to a specialist, and then it turns out you have a fucking boulder in your in your uterus or whatever. <laughs> like, oh, fuck. Um, but you know what I mean? Like, like they, they have the things they check for and then they're, they're limited. The primary care people, it seems like. So from there, I, I agree. Like you should be able to ask, like you should not feel bad asking questions about things, even if they tell you it's one way. Yeah. I mean, like when I first went to the psychiatrist, I didn't know that you could tell them. No, it's like she hand she started handing me mad different medications and shit. Until one of my friends was like, yo, you shouldn't be on lithium, bro. Like, you're not supposed to be doing lithium. Like, right, that's a depression medicine, right? Yeah, like, they, they give it to, like, schizophrenic people and shit. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, oh, I could just tell her no. Like, I don't want... Interesting. To. I shouldn't be on that. Well, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, cra- All right. Crazy. So yeah. like, you you will take... Th- it, you took it as you will take this. Yeah, like, they tell me, like, oh, what's wrong? What do you? How's your day going? And you tell them, and it's like, okay, you take this. And it's like, oh, I don't think that... Interesting. Wow. So that, yeah, that's like a heavy diet. That's like a heavy prescription. Yeah. So for just a little while, you were like out here taking heavy drugs. Well, the lithium for was only like a week. That but were it was prescribed like, to you. Yeah. They were, they were giving me all type of, the fir- my first time going to the psychiatrist, that first psychiatrist. And I think she even like had some stuff because she had a bunch of like signs like in her office that was like, you can't like talk crap about us on social media, blah, blah, blah. We'll sue you. Oh, like, wow. And then they actually did. Have you like, are doing they, it. That's great. They did. <laughs> <laughs> Hypothetically. 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 Yeah. Um, <laughs> I probably. Yeah. I'm not going to say her name. Yeah. Uh, no. I don't. I can't even remember. It's probably the dent nigga. Um, yeah. Uh, I learned. I learned a lot from just going from you know to to them. So, okay. So I, so I have at different periods of time had like city health insurance where a lot of the time I was with like people who also had like government, Mm -hmm. uh, insurance where it's like, none of us are paying for it. So it's like a lot of the times it's like not always the best doctors, but you sort of have to like figure it out. Like sometimes you'll end up in a spot, but I saw like a lot of quote, like low income people in these areas which made me think I'm like, Oh, you know, all these people get it for free. So they're always constantly going to the doctor. So it's interesting to hear you say additionally that like there's a very large contingent of people as well that even though they theoretically could be getting it for free, they just don't go to the doctor ever. 
I've I've for a long time was worried because I still haven't even got the free one because in my mind I'm like I don't like I don't know if it's gonna be good. Right. I don't think it could be good. Well, dude, as a as a veteran of doing it, if you need help, I'd be happy to to show you how to set it up. Yeah, since I, need I got it. it for free for many years. Dude, do you have any Valentine's Day plans? I need some dinner for my lady. Nice. And then afterwards, I mean, it's Valentine's Day. A little bit of romance. Maybe a little bit of romance. No matter what you do, you want to feel sexy. Hundred percent. You want to be comfortable. And that's why I'm wearing me undies right now, Julio. I love it, man. And look, you want to make sure you're presenting well on Valentine's Day. You Absolutely. I mean? Regardless of what you're working with, the me undies, contoured pouch, and ball caddy will make it look like you're packing heat. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's nice. It's nice to look good down there. Yeah, you want feel to. Feel confident. Yeah, feel confident, sexy, clean, and all put together. Ready to go. Dude, another fun thing you could do, in my opinion, uh, and me undies offers these products, you could show up. With your loved one wearing either a jock strap or a thong as a guy, and it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. 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 You know, humor is just as attractive as being attractive. And some people are attracted to jock straps in a not funny way. That's also true. So the jock strap might actually work. I know for me, I'm intending to surprise Hill Dog with either a thong or a jock strap. Yeah. On Valentine's Eve. I like that idea. Yeah, it's going to be very cute. I'm ha- I'm jealous of, of Hillary for that. Dude, check these puppies out, though. This is the standard me undie boxer brief situation. They're soft as ever. It's mm-hmm. a great pair. Here, take a, take a touch of these, pal. Are these clean? Those are clean, yes. You sure about that? I am. I'm not using some sort of weird fetish on you here. <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, what, what else is there to say? If you haven't felt these yet, you got to get a pair. Um, you gotta do we it. have we have a great deal. We've been working with MeUndies for a little while now, and uh, there's a reason why we get excited when we get to do ad reads like this. Take these back. Toss them back over here, dude. This Valentine's Day, good things come in big packages at MeUndies. Get 20% off your first order plus free shipping at MeUndies.com slash oops. That's MeUndies.com slash oops for 20% off plus free shipping. MeUndies. Comfort from the outside in you've talked to me about your family a bunch and you know your parents strong unit loving family were they like anti-medicine like what was it like why didn't you guys go to the doctor just out of curiosity yeah like my mom's like super old school like she didn't but they didn't they don't like the doctor got it like they just don't trust them yeah they're from like that period yeah yeah so they're just like no you're like do this, you'll be fine. Yeah, like I remember when I had when I was little, like my mom, like home remedies, like I had bumps on like my elbows and knees, and she, you know, rub lemon, oh, put some, rub some lemons on it. Right, and, right. You know. And I think you know a lot of that stuff works. You know what I mean? Those. Yeah, are, that actually did work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, but, like, here, take this frog and rub it on your. <laughs> <laughs> when you when you say old school, what do you mean by that? Like uh, they just don't. I mean, because the doctors weren't trusted when they were growing up, and. Doctors even did fucked up shit when they were like growing up. So, right there, you hear all the I, I forget specifically what it was, but you hear these stories about like experiments and shit with black people. Yeah. yeah. So like I can understand that. Yes, yeah, I've never Making experienced that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like yeah. not trusting. Right. Uh, You're like, eh, okay, fair enough. Yeah. Um, uh, and then from there, dude. I mean, we were talking about a bunch of stuff in the car that was pretty like crazy and interesting uh specifically you told me one story about somebody in your family got mistaken for somebody else yeah and can you just tell us that story this is like one of the craziest stories i've ever heard so i was i was bringing my ex home to meet my uh meet my family for the first time and so we go all the way to riverhead get there we literally walk in we walk in the front door and I'm introducing mom, dad, you know, da da da. And then we get a phone call, and it's my brother, and he's like fucking hyperventilating. He's like, "Somebody pick me up, pick me up, pick me up! I'm at the I'm at the police station." And we're just like, "What the fuck?" Like, I I literally walked in the door, but Steve, he's the youngest one, you know, he'd be in the hood and shit. So wait, but but your kid, your siblings were all like good kids, right? Yeah, we're all good. So he wasn't like doing anything bad. Even, yeah, even though he's hanging out in the hood with hood niggas, he's not a bad kid. You know? Right, and he's just like, but so okay to clarify, he's hanging out with this group. At this group thing, there's a contingent of people who are not do are not into bad stuff. Also, right? It's like a big party. There might, there might be. I mean, I feel I, might, I feel like it was mostly shady niggas. Okay. Yeah. So why was he? Why like, 
just you know. Eli, yeah, he, uh, I, well, because when we moved to Riverhead, I um I was a teenager. I was in like tenth grade. Stephen was the youngest, so he was in like elementary school. Where did you guys live before then? Center H. Okay, so this is all like long out on Long Island. Yeah, stuff. Yeah, so we moved to Riverhead. So Stephen was a little kid. So all like the little kids he met there when they grew up, they're fucking hood niggas. Got it. So, so these are like his best friends, but now they're fucking. They lost hood their niggas. way. Yeah. And he be he's, and he's a trap. good boy, but yeah. now these are just the people he knows. Yeah, Got from it. being a kid. So, but Riverhead and they're not necessarily bad kids too. Right. They either were getting caught up in doing bad shit like what do you like what do you mean by that like they're not necessarily yeah like his best friend justice he was a cool kid i mean he got up caught up in some shit and i think he was the one in jail and you know in the story yes okay yeah okay but so it's like all you know all those they're not bad kids you know just caught up in the trap so we need more explanation about what that means so like not bad kids they're just they are around the bad things that other people are doing and it's easy to get caught up in doing that is that what you mean yeah gang shit guns and drugs right yeah and like how does a good kid go wrong in that way in your opinion if you since you seem to have experience and have seen it happen um just getting caught up not being emotionally mature and like you so so for example i'm like a lot of the shit in the hood i realize is just manipulation it's like a lot of niggas in the hood are just being manipulated. And if they actually like woke up, they'd be like, yo, there's nothing. I'm actually being used. Like right. my big homie's using me. Right. And pull, yo, you got to take this. Yo, take the charge, nigga. Yo, you got this. It's like. Right. Meaning like making you get in trouble for him. Yeah. Because that's like a real. It's the code. That's nigga, real. It's the code. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I drive the police station, pick him up. He's scratched up, you know. And shit gets in my car, and I'm just like, what? I, I can't even remember what happened. I think I drove back to the crib. But so this, what happened, this is how the story went. So we lived right next to the Elks Lodge in Riverhead. And so they had, like, this, this fucking party. Like, they throw parties and shit, and, uh, you know... You know... I've been to hood. them. Yeah. Yeah, like, like in my, where I grew up, they would throw a bachelor party... And random people could go so that they could raise money to pay for it. Yeah. It would be like strippers and alcohol and shit. See, I've never been to one of those. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't necessarily even know what it's like. Mm-hmm. But, it was, I mean, it was literally our house is here. The Elks Lodge. It's like the streets here. The Elks Lodge is right here. Got it. So he, you know, all his boys are over there. He goes over there and he walks in. And so apparently there's some out of town niggas there. And they're looking for this kid who's a blood, who's like a fucking 16 year old blood or like. He was like a teenager or some shit. Um, my brother was definitely older. But so there's this kid in the hood who's like, so Riverhead has always like just towns have beef out there. I don't know if it was Brentwood or like one of those other towns. Uh, but some niggas from out of town had some beef with some Riverhead niggas. And so apparently. It sounds like a movie. The out of town guys yeah. are here causing trouble. There's like mm-hmm. three out of town niggas. And. <clears throat> My little brother walks in and they're like, yo, you zip him up. (laughs) (laughs) And how old are these guys who are asking him that? They're young, right? They're they're all teenagers. Yeah, bro. That's the thing that blows my mind about some of these stories. Okay, so they're teenagers. Yeah. Um, So like, yo, you zip him up. And he's like, no, I'm Steven. (laughs) And they're like, oh, all right. All right. All right. Zip him up. (laughs) (laughs) Zip him up, guys. Zip him up is this person who they're looking for. Yeah, like body bags. Like apparently it's just like he killed so many niggas. I don't know. And zip him up is like 15. Allegedly. I don't know nothing. nothing, Yeah. Yeah. Body bag. Zipping up body bag. Yeah. So he's like, no, I'm Steven. I was like, all right. Okay. (laughs) All right, nigga. (laughs) <laughs> so immediately his fucking nigga senses is going off like all right something's wrong here maybe we sh- like i should leave uh so he leaves and then the three guys immediately walk after him and then I, he had like a bunch of people there i think somebody like screamed something so he immediately just starts running they start fucking chasing after him so it's the elk lodge the the crib and i think i literally must have like just pulled up. This had to have been like as I was like, this is crazy. I might have still like just been in the fucking house with my ex. Or this was like right before I pulled up to the crib. And 
So they chased him. He didn't want to run into the house because then these three niggas know where he lives. So right. he, he, he runs to the house. He didn't know what to do. So he runs right past the house and jumps over the fence and like runs through the bushes and fucking. And I guess his mind was like the, the I guess the first thing is the police station. I guess I'm the safest at the police station. Yeah. Let me go there. So, and the police station is not too far from a crib. So he ran there. And then I got, a, I think he like asked somebody, pulled somebody, yo, 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 let me get your phone, please. Yo, yo, call, <laughs> oh my God. Pick me up. And I'm like, mom, dad, this is Emmy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, dude. Help, help. <laughs> so, but the important, so you told me too that later on they apologized somehow. Yeah, one of the kids uh, ended up in the jail with his best friend. And they, I guess we're talking about the situation. He's like, yo, my bad about that shit, man. You know what I'm saying? Yo, but we, yo, we almost got your boy, though. Like, yo, <laughs> I'm but, sorry, yo, but we almost, yo, we, I had the beam on his back, yo. Bro, the, fucking... the beam on his back, dude, yeah. which means they have a gun pointed at his back. Yeah. He almost got murdered for absolutely no reason. Yeah, that if is he tripped, insane. he probably would be dead right now. For no reason at all. Yeah, just other than from accident, yeah. Right, and you could say... Oh, well, like, why was he even there to begin with? Like, where else is he going to go? This is where he lives. These are the people he yeah, knows. Just He's not at. doing anything wrong. You know? But I mean, that's the thing where it's like, I tell him all the time, like, you can't, you don't have to be bad because he'll be like, I'm not bad. I'm not doing nothing wrong. But it's the same shit my mom used to tell me when I was younger and I was hanging out in the hood. And like one time I was hanging out at this traffic circle that we all st used to hang out at. Um, and then I got injured one night. Thank God. <laughs> uh, and... <laughs> And the traffic circle got shot up that night. Some nigga fucking pulled up, popped a trunk, pulled out an AK. Da, 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 da. Jesus Christ. And some dude that we knew, too. Um, Just so, whoever was there was there that night? Yeah, he was pissed at some guy that we knew and pulled up there. Fucking, yo, pop the trunk, nigga. Pop the trunk. Just pulled but you're, up. like what you're saying, like people not involved could have just happened to be there that night. Right. And Catch then, yeah, straight, I, mean, I had a bunch they're of friends out. that they, their cars got taken from like detectives because they had to fucking like take their cars in and inspect them and all that shit. Dude. And like a couple people, one, somebody got hit in the hand, somebody got hit in the foot, just sitting in their car just because this nigga was just spraying all over. But it's like, you don't have to be doing anything wrong. It's just the wrong place, wrong time. Right. So you were telling me too about like, you'd walk home and like the shelters that you were talking about, which I'll, something you told me that was interesting. So there was a lot of you in your family. Yeah. So like, you know, six siblings, right? Yeah. And you guys are all sort of like in, at periods of time, like in these quote shelters. But you said that some of them were kind of nice, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so tell me some, about that. I'm curious about I that. I mean, the, the there was a shelter in Suffolk. It was called Help Suffolk. I think it was Bellport. This was like when we were like really young. And it was it was like a gated community. But like we didn't even know that. Like we were, I saw the ID actually. I, I need to show you the ID, but it, it was like it didn't even. I didn't know we were homeless because it didn't feel like a shelter. Like it, right. it kind of like thinking back on it, it kind of like reminds me of like a Tim Burton esque like fucking movie because like they had like this outdoor areas with playground, like a couple playgrounds, and they had like fake grass set up and shit. And um, it was like mad different f floors and shit, but it's all these homeless people. But, I mean, and so we we were kids, so we'd go to school, so we'd leave, the buses would pick us up, take us to school, we'd come back, come back in, you know, community. But it, that one, it was just like, it was so beautiful as a kid, I didn't even know we were fucking homeless. Right. I didn't know it was a shelter. Right, right, interesting. I never felt uh, afraid or anything mm -hmm. in any of them. Even, like, when we were in, in East Quag, we were in this... Um, it was, I think it was the best Eastern motel they convert, converted into a shelter. And it was like, that's when I would slap box with the Bloods and uh, <laughs> Smokey and Angel and Playboy. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Smokey, Angel, and Playboy. And uh, yeah, I mean, we'd slap the shit out of each other. They, I mean, the thing is, it's like, I was never scared of them, but you know how like hood niggas are, where it's like, yo, yo, you got the new Resident Evil, yo, can we borrow that? And they borrow it, and then it's just like, you wouldn't get it back. <laughs> it's like like there was a, that's the one thing we learned about shelters is just like you got to lock all your shit up and you just can't trust none like no niggas with your shit nobody's gonna give it back like the, i remember when we first moved there there was this kid stefan 
And my brother had like Game Boy games and shit. And this kid literally just like stole his game and then just popped up playing the game. And my brother's like, yo, you took my game. He's like, no, I didn't. And it's like, nigga, we're in a shelter in East Quad, bro. Where did you get this Game Boy game from? Nigga? What are you talking about? Oh, Give me my game back. That sucks. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you also said that one time your dad got pissed at you for hanging out with them or something. Yeah, because he uh, he because my dad still went to work. He still worked every single day, mm-hmm. you know, growing up, whether we were ha- like in a house or not. Um, so he, he was at work and we were slap out. Me and Smokey were slap boxing one day, just smacking the shit out of each other. But I've, I mean, because I've always been a scrawny nigga, too. But I also have like a, a, you know, a, a rowdy mouth so I could talk shit. You know, <laughs> even if it's like some blood niggas, like, you know, we're still we're still having fun. Mm. So I would talk shit. Niggas fucking he was like choke, like yoke me up. It was legit like choking me out. And my dad asked my dad's like pulling up in his truck <laughs> from work. And then he's just like, yo, what the fuck? And then, he, yeah, we had a nice talk. Nice. Like, I don't want you hanging around them niggas no more. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dad. <laughs> um, yeah, probably for the best, it sounds like, dude. Shout yeah, that's why it's good to have a dad, dude. Yeah, yeah. So, if, like, stop. Like, you're getting choked out by niggas. Like, stop. Stop that. All right, well, let me ask you this then. If So, you said, you know, you're a little kid. You're in a homeless shelter. You don't even know you're in a homeless shelter. But when you if you ever, like, were at a point in your, you know, adolescence as a teenager in high school, if you were in... Were you guys ever in one during that time? Um, well, like third grade, we were in a house up until ninth grade. Then okay. ninth, we got evicted. And then that's when we were in like another one. That's when we went to one in East Quag. And then we were there for like the summer. And that's when we got the house in Riverhead. And then we moved to Riverhead. Okay. So you were only there for like a short period of time. Yeah. You. that Yeah. That one is a, is a teenager. Yeah. Um, we're like, so, okay. So I guess that's quote not that bad like nah. obviously not great to get evicted but like were you ever like in em- were you like embarrassed in your with your social life or like i i was kind of but like in high school because we finished up the school year but because i told kid <laughs> i told the kids in in school that i moved to to east quag i didn't tell them it was a right. shelter and parts of east quag are like really fancy yeah east quag's like so a rich like, oh, part okay. of long island yeah so everybody thought i was rich <laughs> like yo josh yo you went you moved to east quag bro yo that's dope <laughs> and i had a minibus pick us up from the motel and then drop us off at, at school nice yeah so everybody thought we were rich as fuck oh that's but, hilarious so yeah. you played it off that's good dude lucy is upping the nicotine pouch game with breakers Pouch is packing a little something extra inside. Mm. You know, you give a nice little pop. You can break it with your teeth. Let the liquid kind of zoom out there. I mean, dude, if you know your pouches, you know the nicotine doesn't hit you immediately. Uh, neither does the flavor. And look, the geniuses at Lucy have come up with a brilliant way to fix both of those problems. They put a mini liquid capsule inside each breaker's pouch. So here's what you do. Grab yourself a breaker's pouch. Break the capsule. Yes, with your teeth. It's very mm. satisfying. Put it in your lip and enjoy the immediate nicotine and flavor release. As an orally fixated person, Julio, I love that. I know. And it's great for sitting there. If you got to sit down at your desk all day and focus or whatever it is that you're doing, it can really make a sort of boring task much more exciting. Yeah. Gets you in the zone. Gets me in the zone, at least. Gets you in the zone. Gets us all in the zone. Uh, And they have sort of their traditional go-to flavors uh, like mango and mint, but they also have new ones like espresso, which is kind of my favorite. Goes well with a morning coffee or a coffee at any time of the day. Uh, and they have a variety of strengths. They have the four or eight milligram tobacco free, 100% pure nicotine. So break up your dusty gas station pouches and go to lucy.co slash oops and use promo code oops to get 20% off of your first order. Lucy offers free shipping and has a 30 day refund policy if you change your mind. That's lucy.co and use code oops to get 20% off and always free shipping. And here comes the fine print. Lucy products are only for adults of legal age, and every order is age verified. Warning, this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. Okay, so you're out there, you're doing your thing, you're finishing up. How do you end up then in the city? Uh, I want to start a stand-up. Nice. 2010, and then I started doing mics on Long Island. They were... I mean, the mics on Long Island were far from like Riverhead to Huntington. It's like, you know, 40 minute drive. And then I started going to the city and then it was just 
you know, traveling an hour and a half, two hours to do an open mic and bomb in front of six niggas mm. and then travel all the way back home is fucking torture. Yeah. Sounds like a lot of work and shit. Yeah. And then you, so, but you used to live with your aunt, if I remember, because you and yeah. you, you and Ricky lived kind of in the same area. And you yeah, guys, we're like eight blocks from each other. And you guys would like ride in and out together sometimes, right? Yeah. Yeah. He was hosting uh, at Broadway and I was interning. And then that's when I moved in with my aunt. Um, in Queens Village, and one day I, Ricky was talking about it. I'm like, "Yo, you live in Queens? Oh, I was, and I'm on 210. Yo, I'm on 218." I was like, "Oh, word! Oh, crazy!" And he's like, "Yo, I got the whip. Let's ride back." Oh, and amazing! Then, yeah, that's fire. Yeah, the, the good old days. To have the ride home late at night, if you are in on like a deep stop off of any subway line, is very clutch because they're the always one. working on it at night. Yeah, and you gotta get off and take the shuttle bus. And the F train, too. It's like, bro, that la- it was the last stop, 179th. And then we were on 210, so we'd get off at 179th, and then you'd have to wait there and for the bus, and the bus would have to take you the rest of the way. Right. And that bus was just a pain in the fucking ass. Yeah. And How long would you sometimes have to wait for the bus if you were to miss it by a few minutes? I, I, rem- I remember it being long. And also, like, that part of Queens, it was just so random, too. Oh. And there was, like... The- that was also at the time where there were no apps. So it was like you just fucking had to, you're just sitting there just looking at the time, mm-hmm. you know? Like I could get to Jersey faster than over there. Right. Which is where you live now, right? Yeah. Then also the ride was so long that I'd get fucked up at night and then I'd miss the last stop and mm-hmm. then I'd wake up at Coney Island, like oh, that's on crazy. the other side. And then I'd like have to. You know, sit there and go all the way back. That is like the way you just did such that. a far. Uh, how yeah, far yeah, that is, guys, old. is actually shocking. from one seventy nine to Coney Island is like, yeah, it's 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 the the last stops on either end of the train. How unbelievable that journey is to me is crazy. We have a couple other friends who who would do that too. Yeah, who would like fall asleep. I don't want to like say it just in case they get annoyed. But there were a couple times where like I'd miss it. I'd fucking wake up at Coney Island. I'd be like, Jesus Christ. And I'd be like, all right. I, I put my head down <laughs> fucking to take a nap. And then I wake up. And I'm going back towards Coney Island. Oh I'm like, no, no, no. Oh, my God. No. Oh, my God. Sun's up. I'm just like, oh my You God. stay up after that, right? <laughs> I, there was once I did it like three times, bro. <laughs> that's that's like, pretty silly. Like before I had my dog, like I would just get blasted like blackout drunk and then like shit like that would happen damn bro well yeah, yeah. at least the dog's good you gotta go home and feed him <laughs> yeah walk, i gotta right? walk terrence <laughs> <laughs> yeah um okay well dude you since you have been in your sort of vehicle phase which i'm hoping is just a phase although it seems as if you this that's is your not. this is your way of transportation so that's yeah. fine but josh has like gotten in a bunch of accidents in the past few years yeah right like too many falling getting hit by cars like you know and as a person who doesn't currently have health insurance that concerns me and are of all of our friends has a mushy part of their brain yeah and look you're a fucking <laughs> you're an adult like i'm not going to sit here and t- try to tell you what to do but I personally worry about you. I know we all do. And I know that you have some chronic pain that we suspect is from some of these accidents. And we would all like you to get insurance, bro. <laughs> no, I, you, I was going to... <laughs> I, I was going to sign up this morning. I just good, didn't have good, the time. Good. All right. but, well, fuck, um, God I'm damn definitely... it. I'm the reason why you didn't have time now? You're like, oh, I had to come do your show, dude. Sorry. <laughs> fuck. Not my unicycle. I was working on my unicycle, too. Yeah. Well, so... And look, you have the body armor. Dude, do whatever you want, obviously. And this is not why I called you on the show to, like, make some announcement that you need to get health insurance. <laughs> but, like, I'll, you know, I know your neck hurts, your arm hurts, you My got back your back hurts. Throbbing, bro. And, you, and we're pretty certain that these are direct, directly related to some sort of accidents. Yeah, I know exactly. What you did. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Okay, and for, there was a time where you... So, okay, so you went to the doctor and got a clean bill of health. But then I also remember for, like, two years, you got, like, seven surgeries. Yeah. Was that all shit that, like, that had kind of happened over time where they're like, oh, you need surgery there, you need surgery there? Bro, I think it's just the simulation, bro. It's like, as soon as I got health insurance, it's like... <laughs> oh, crazy. Yeah. And this is not accident-related? They were accident-related. Uh, from skateboards and shit? Um, The wrist was my skateboard. 
the hip was the skateboard fuck no shoulder skateboard my hip was walking my dog we got chased by a dog that's you know, nothing you can do there yeah uh, <laughs> that's that sounds terrifying nothing you can yeah. do there yeah um okay um, yeah but right now this i had a skateboard accident i think 2022 my and that's how i fucked my neck up and then 2023 is the the big one that did me in mm. where i'm at right now okay does the skateboard have a motor on it it was one of those ones with the casey neistat type yeah of skateboard? i think it was after we did yeah. a show i think we did a show it, i feel like yeah i'm pretty sure it was after we came back from a show and i had my electric skateboard and i got on the skateboard and my fucking thumb slipped on the remote and fucking oh, just shit. shot and it just shot out from underneath me and i flew back and my head just slammed on the fucking street Ugh. and i just felt a fucking shock going down my neck oh my god I was like dude. ah oh my god so yeah that was the start and what led you to graduate to the what is it called a unicycle what is the electric one? unicycle euc that's what it's called an euc yeah what led you to graduate to that vehicle they're actually surprisingly safer i mean it's easier to ride um it's a it's a more comfortable ride because electric unicycle like the wheel on this one i have it's like a it's a fat tire with air in it so you don't feel rocks you don't like if i ride on the sidewalk you just feel like you're gliding mm. you, know, you could i could hit a pothole and you're like you're barely gonna feel it but electric skateboard it, it's the small like rubber tires and you feel if you're riding that bitch on the sidewalk, you feel every single crack in your feet. Well, also, like if you hit a rock, there's been plenty of times where I just hit like just a little triangle rock and you hit that <laughs> bitch with one wheel and it just stops and you keep going. <laughs> yeah, dude. Does it have a remote or is it kind of like the hoverboards that came out like 2015 yeah. where it like goes based off of how you lean against forward or, or backward? That's also why it's less safe because it has a remote. And so the last one I had, I had a Meepo board, which is like, they come from China, but they're they're really good. Um, and I fell while I was riding it, and I fell onto the remote and fucked up the remote. <laughs> oh, so sure. it fucked, for some reason, that like fucked up the signal between the board and the remote. So then when I would ride it, it would just randomly cut out. <laughs> so I could be going like 20 miles an hour, and it would just fucking, I, it would just cut out. And I, I can't speed up or slow down. Damn. And that was terrifying. Wait, the, the pebble thing you were describing, was that from the skateboard or from the unicycle? Uh, skateboard. Okay, okay. Yeah. So the oh. unicycle isn't... Unicycle, it's you're like, you feel like you're flying. Like, it's 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 such a smooth ride. Nice. Oh, okay, and how fast does that go? The one I have right now goes 45 miles. Do anymore. you Do you frequently go at top speed? I still haven't been able to reach 45. Mm. And I I can ride hard, <laughs> not hard enough. This is giving me anxiety. I, I've, 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 please I've don't get, really please don't fastest, encourage him, Ryan. That's I've, really fast. I've hit was thirty six. Um, I think I hit thirty eight. And how can you tell how fast you're going? Is there a speedometer like yeah. by your heels? Yeah, right. There's right on the on the there's a, there's a big screen right on the top, so it shows you how fast and. Everything. Do you ride it through the tunnel? Can you ride that through like the Lincoln Tunnel? <laughs> I would if I could. You're not allowed to. Okay. No, nah. I've ridden it over the bridges and stuff. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. Okay, well, bro, look, your body's all fucked up. We need you to go to the doctor soon. Yeah, we if I don't, bro, I don't know how much longer I'm going to last. Yeah, bro, don't. and I don't like that for you, man. You're a young man. You're young. You have your life all your all, whole life ahead of you. Everybody loves you. You're a great guy. Uh, you know, never, if you're always value add to any hang. Everybody loves, No, I've never met a person who doesn't like you in my whole life. Not even close. Everyone loves Josh. So, Everybody, I speak for everybody to say, please go to the fucking doctor, dude. Keep, you know, I'm not going to sit here and tell you not to ride shit because, you know, <laughs> you're a grown ass man. Do whatever you want. However, this it seems foolish to not just fucking go to the doctor. And I get you after know, that flight. Yeah. Yeah. Skepticism, whatever. But you've been to the doctor a bunch when you had insurance and you loved it. So, you know, now that the doctor's where it's at and you just all the the only thing that's stopping you is going on the computer and fucking doing it. Yeah, I can't. I can't get my password, bro. That's the. That's what's fucking. Bro, me up. that's ridiculous. I Let, can't get this question right. So say I forgot my password. 
Yeah, that's what I did. And then, like, you got to call the number. And that's what I'm like, God. You got to yeah, do this because if this Shit. podcast episode comes out and then, God forbid, something tragic happens to you, <laughs> this episode would be so sour and sad. Yeah. Like, you just need to do it. I don't know. I think I'd get more views if I'm fucking. It might, bro. Yeah, we don't that's want not that. what we want. We don't want those kind of <laughs> Not that way. No, nah, I'm not. I'm not going to die. Um, I'm gonna, <laughs> you got to do it. I'm going to. Yeah. I'm. Trust me, the pain in my back is some of the worst pain I've ever felt in my life. You right, on the insurance. flight, bro. On the flight, <laughs> the guy is wincing and curling into a ball. Nigga, uh, that shit from the pressure, right? Yeah, I I didn't even. I, nigga, when I went home, I googled it. I was like, can I was like, can the like the like the the I forgot what it was like. It's just something about the flight just going up there. Yeah, like the cabin pressure, the altitude. Really. Yeah, altitude. Yeah. Really. Um, okay. Yeah. But dude, look like all the only thing stopping you from living a happy, healthy life is just going through these annoying bureaucratic hurdles to set your shit up. No one's going to do it for you. You know, no one's going to monitor whether or not you did it, but it is going to make everybody sad. (laughs) (laughs) We do feel bad for you. And I'm I'm definitely, I mean, I, I a hundred percent need surgery at least one. (laughs) Great. And look, bro, maybe you do, maybe you don't. You probably do. I'm sure you know, whatever. I don't even think I should be working, honestly. But dude, yeah, like Further let's get more, let's get the get ball rolling, but let's go. get the ball rolling, buddy. Yeah. yeah. And you just mentioned that you went on Google and, and typed in to search for the cabin pressure thing. That's already yeah. like half of it. Opening the laptop and opening Google. Yeah. And then and, and then, then it was like, yeah, it does it does affect it felt like I was getting stabbed in the back. Yeah. Jeez. If you're so already on painful. Google, you should just figure out the password thing. They'll send it to your email. Well, I don't know what's my favorite radio station. That was the that was the question, and I was hot ninety seven. What kind of music? Do you, what kind of music? There's on the only radio? there's 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 hot ninety seven, and then power one hundred five. And I put them. I put all different variations. I put ninety seven point one, one hundred five point three, hot ninety seven, power one hundred five. I put all the different variations. Spaces, no spaces. Everything. They're still like can't. Did wrong. it lock you out, or were you allowed to just keep guessing? Like what about Z one hundred? No <laughs> I wouldn't have put, put that. that. Down, if anything, well, I would have put one hundred six point one because that's Long Island, and that's just like a radio station I remember from Long Island. But maybe you, you were you, feeling some type of way though when you like were signing up, and it was different. Than what you <laughs> like I was in a to. in a zone. I, like you were just. <laughs> Why would I do that? You were like myself? listening to like Justin Timberlake on ninety two point three, and like that's what you gravitated towards when you were feeling. I think it that up. is a good one. Ninety two point three. Try that, bro. But listen. if they're not locking you out, try them all. Dude, the key is when you make a when you do, when you make no. a question, never pick one that is what is your favorite because your favorite's gonna fucking change. So I've done that before. It's like, what's your favorite pizza topping? It's not the same as in 2011 when I made this fucking shit. <laughs> you know true. what I mean? Yeah. You got to be like, mother's made a name. Where'd you graduate from high school? Like Mascot. something that doesn't have hyphens or punctuation. You know what I mean? No spaces. Like. I'll straight up look through that shit and be like, I'm not going to be able to remember any of these in 10 years. <laughs> this sucks. Uh, but it's, it's funny you bring that up because that happens to me too, where I'm like, this is so annoying. Right. Um, but yeah, bro, I want you to just feel good uh, because, you know, you're the man. Yeah, that'll be a different life. Um, yeah. But, you know, I do. I will say Josh's fucking wheel is pretty impressive. It's dope, man. <laughs> it, is pre- it, it sounds pretty They're cool. They're going to take over. Yeah, yeah. I saw a father. I was at a coffee shop this morning, and I saw a father pushing his son or daughter in a stroller while riding on the wheel. Really? I thought it was pretty impressive. You know what? I saw a, a dad pushing his kid, and it was like a toy. Like, um, you know how like they have like those like weird toys and shit. Like, uh, what's the 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 car where it's like red and yellow, like the Tyco or whatever? It one was of, like, one of the ones where you like. Well, it was. It was like a. It was like a. Like a toy electric oh, yeah. unicycle. Yes, 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 yes. And the kid was like on it. and That's crazy. Dude. Yeah. And he had like just a thing pushing it. I was like, that's fucking cool, man. Yeah, that's cool. That's, that's, you know, adapt or die that's type right. of situation. Yeah, that guy was on the wheel. Thing. Oh, Jesus. That's crazy. Those are dangerous <laughs> as fuck. What is it? The one wheel. Isn't that what you have? I thought that's what you have. No, I have uh, an electric unicycle. That's the, the one wheel is the skateboard one. Oh, yeah. That's those different. are actually all, they recalled all of those, I believe. Yeah, he's wobbling wheels. a little bit. I had a, I yeah. recorded it because it was because silly, those, yeah. <laughs> those 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 all like they malfunction. They do a thing called ghosting, where like when you dismount, it like there's like some mi- malfunction, and it basically just takes off at top speed, 
and just doesn't stop until oh it hits something. Oh my god! Does it god. do that like when you have like one foot on in the process of getting off of it? Yeah, like when you're getting off. Yeah. But like, like I've seen videos of them just like going out and like taking people's fucking feet out. <laughs> they're just like shooting across the street. Bro, that sounds horrible. Yeah. Um. Yeah, speed freaks me out, dude. I gotta be honest. Speed. 40, 45 miles per hour is crazy. Nah, no, it's the it, <laughs> you would think, but bro, like, I'm peeling my bottle because of how much this is stressing me. Even out. bro, being even injured, like I'm injured and I'm flying, knowing that if anything happens, <laughs> I'm dead, nigga. It's a wrap. But it's still, it's very exhilarating. So you just enjoy the thrill of riding on that thing. It's. You feel like you're flying. You feel like you're flying because I'm legit like because I'm leaning into it, too. That's what knocked me unconscious from the last accident. It's because you're leaning forward into it. I've uh, seen you and you put your arms back. He yeah, looks like put my arms back, a I'm superhero. Just, bro. Psh- People are going to start taking pictures with you in the fucking street. They think you're like <laughs> Spider-Man or some shit. Yeah, and no, I'm just delivering food, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Another great episode of the pod. Uh, Josh, where where can we follow you and find you and all that stuff? Um, Instagram J West J A Y dot W E S S. Um, that's it. Uh, I don't even know my Twitter. I think it's Trash Wesson. <laughs> <laughs> follow him on the gram. Uh, yeah. He's a great comedian, good follow, uh, and a great guy. And uh, you know, hopefully, you will be able to figure out your pain situation. Uh, I'm actually so you can uh, be sorry to cut self. you off. I'm gonna. I'm going to be making a YouTube uh, channel probably riding my electric unicycle awesome. until <laughs> nice. I die on it. So <laughs> look out for that. Hopefully that will not happen. The, the YouTube channel, I hope, does happen. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully you will not die live on the YouTube channel. Uh, but yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, you know where to find me. Uh, NotJulio.com for all my tour dates. I'm going to be in Union Hall in Brooklyn on the 13th, uh, right before I film my special the 16th in Chicago. So there might be a couple of tickets left for that. Grab them if you can. Uh, at Not Julio Lynch, what about you? Yeah, send us emails, stories, grievances, questions, answers at oopsthepodcast at gmail.com. You guys have been sending us some, so we're excited to get to those soon. And then check me out at Ryan is Really Polite uh, on all socials. So we'll see you guys later. <laughs>